Welcome to the endocrine section of the CCRN exam review. I'm Kimmy Christie and welcome back again. So when you look at this picture, it looks very complicated, but this is the endocrine system. It's very complex and confusing. And that's why God invented the endocrinologist. So an answer to any real question that's very conflicting is consult endocrinology. So there are so many things in the endocrine system, but the CCRN exam has narrowed it down to just a few very important concepts. <clears throat> and the interesting thing is fluid and electrolytes are very important for endocrinology. So the first really topic that's very prevalent on the exam is diabetes insipidus, DI, diabetes insipidus. <clears throat> and the definition of that is a deficiency of antidiuretic hormone. So what that means is there's a part of the pituitary that's not working well for a multitude of reasons. One is neurogenic, so it could be a closed head injury, increased ICP, open craniotomy. It could be nephrogenic. Uh, there's nothing like that on the test, and it's not psychogenic. So let's just concentrate on neurogenic. So this is the pituitary because it's being compressed for whatever reason, is not making a deficiency of antidiuretic hormone. So what you see in this person is they are putting out all of their free water in their urine. <clears throat> so intravascularly, they get very dehydrated, dry, putting out tons of urine, but the urine looks like water, smells like water, tastes like water. No, I don't taste it, but it looks just like water. The specific gravity of water is one, and the urine looks almost like that. So what's happening is the patient is getting rid of all their free water out of their vascular system, so the serum sodium appears to go up higher because of the percentage. If you had a cup full of seawater, there's water and there's salt in there. But if I take away the water, what happens to the concentration of salt? It goes up. Same thing with your blood. If I take away the free water, the concentration of salt goes up. So these people have huge amounts of urine, become very dehydrated, intravascularly dehydrated, and have increases in their serum sodium or hypernatremia. So they have polyuria, dehydration, neurologic changes because of high serum sodium. So they have a mental status change. Now, the next part of the slide, and this is the first time today and tomorrow that you will see red in my slides. So that means to me, look out for this. You need to know this concept. <clears throat> the patient is putting out all their free water. So their urine specific gravity looks like water. Their serum sodium is elevated higher than 145. And now the next three things are very important. This is an endocrine disorder. It is not a renal disorder. So the creatinine is normal. But the BUN, this patient's lights, when you're looking at their chemistries, their BUN is going up, creatinine stays the same. Their serum osmolality is going up and their H&H &H is going up. <clears throat> so you come in and say, the H&H &H is going up. Have you given the patient a unit of blood? And Emma says, no, we haven't given any blood. This patient is what we call hemoconcentrated. We've removed the fluid and they become more hemoconcentrated. So H&H &H goes up. <clears throat> Usually the only provider that orders a serum osmolality is a neurologist or a nephrologist. But you know what? You do not need an order to figure out a serum osmolality. If you have a smartphone, and I think everybody has a smartphone, you can put some medical calculations on your phone as an app, and they're free. And all you need to figure out serum osmolality is a glucose and the electrolytes. And you put those numbers in, you press calculate, and you get a serum osmo. So what you need to know for the test is a normal serum osmolality is 275 to 295. So on the test, if they say the serum osmo is 350, that's higher than 275 to 295. So if it's higher, does that make the patient volume overloaded or are they dehydrated <clears throat> in their vascular space? The higher the osmolality, the more dehydrated the patient is, the less water they have. So I know by this that, boy, this patient is dehydrated. 
very dehydrated and they need some volume replacement. So the management of DI is very simple. Number one, we have to identify it, right? We, we understand the patient has DI. We have to give back some fluid. But what is the patient lacking? What are they deficit in? They're deficit in antidiuretic hormone, which is the same molecule as vasopressin. So we need to give this patient some vasopressin. We can give it IV, sub-Q, or um, uh, intranasally, but we have to replace that. We can fix the volume, but we have to replace the ADH. So all you have to remember is one thing, and you can answer any question about diabetes insipidus. DI, <clears throat> diabetes insipidus, equals dehydrated with high serum sodium. 